The teacher salary stigma is known for being underappreciated on behalf of the role that teachers play in the development of student education. Common sayings like, I'm definitely not in this for the money, and I do this for the students, shows that the intention teachers want to have is to make a difference and maybe help change the world for the better. Instead, the low salary, teacher blame, and lack of administrative support push teachers to either leave or become unsatisfied with their profession. For the majority of experiences in grade school, all the way to high school, students are at school more than anywhere else in their lives, leaving teachers as the ultimate influence of their learning and academic development. Although there is a greater need for further studies in the effects of teachers on student performance, teachers maintain a powerful guide to achievement for future generations, and without them, nobody would be able to reach success such as those we have witnessed throughout time. Due to the significance of this, the fact that some teachers aren't satisfied with their wages and aren't confident in the work shows that there needs to be a change. I'm a first year teacher, and even though I am a first year teacher, I really want the best for my kids. I mean, I put money and time into what I do, and I golly, I want my kids to be taken care of. It's getting increasingly harder for us to meet the individual needs of each one of our students. That's something that's incredibly important to us and absolutely tied to the funding we're asking for. Well, we're asking uh, 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 Secretary DeVos to come to Oklahoma, see how badly needed funding is for our classrooms. We're doing this for the kids today. It's not about us, it's about the kids funding our classrooms, getting adequate textbooks, getting qualified, highly qualified teachers in the classroom, and the resources that enable us to do our job more effectively. It's not about the, t the, p the teacher pay raises. We're not being greedy. What we're fighting for is our kids. That's why we're here. We're that voice for those kids. They deserve better. What you have just witnessed is the current oppression faced by teachers in Oklahoma as they continue their fight for justice against the poorly funded education system. The livelihood of the schools, the students, and the teachers rely on the basis of education, and without the proper compensation, the development of public school academics as a whole will remain on pause. The drive behind current actions of the teachers lies behind many factors encompassing the poor foundation. The crumbling textbooks, the substandard equipment, and a staggeringly low wage are piling against the teaching efforts and are ultimately leading to frustration for teachers and a hindrance towards student academics. Of these predicaments, the teacher's salary is the main focus of the uproar and the basis of school teacher unhappiness. Some may be questioning the necessity of teachers' actions and if there can be another solution. But before we come to a conclusion, let's take a look at some of the salary figures to make sure everyone's on the same page. The following projections give the average salary figures of each state. The average teacher in the United States makes about $58,950 which isn't too bad considering the substantial increase from the 80s and 90s. However, education has taken on a larger recognition over the years, but recently, as you can see, ever since 2010, the salary has seen a bit of a drop-off. If you take a look at states such as West Virginia and Oklahoma, the average salary rests at about the mid 40000s which is significantly lower than the average, and this doesn't even account for the bottom of the salary list, which can be as low as $31,600 in Oklahoma. Some may be thinking, wow, that's awful. Why is this happening? The reasoning behind this leads to the Trump administration. Education budget cuts made by President Trump and Education Secretary Betsy DeVos were made in order to support other causes. A total of $10.6 billion was cut from federal education activities, which took funding from teacher training, after-school programs, student support, and financial aid. This is because the plan involves investing in charter school expansion, and the alternative solution for traditional public schools is to avoid efforts to improve it because of the belief that the system is failing. Secretary DeVos is advancing this proposal by not only avoiding struggling school interaction, but personally labeling the public school system as a monopoly and a dead end. Although the plan is intended for improvement, the approach is gradually pushing public education away from the tension, and the results are only exacerbating the problem by reducing teachers' rights and benefits. These attacks combined with funding decreases, have scared many prospective teachers away from the profession and have created a large frustration for the remainder of current school teachers. Where does this leave the teachers? 
When put in this position, what is the solution? In my opinion, the push for justice is the best stance that teachers can make. If the Trump administration is hanging the select schools to dry, the push back is the best way to stand up. With constant motivation and desire, a change can be made, and there will be justice. West Virginia school teachers, for example, started the whole movement by walking out of classes and going on strike. For a total of nine days, a union of West Virginia teachers refused to teach under the circumstances. As a result, state officials approved a 5% pay raise for all state workers, which bumped the salary of some of the lowest paid teachers in the nation. After the success of West Virginia, Oklahoma teachers followed soon after. Oklahoma Union President Stephanie Winkler claimed that if the budget is not in the interest of the public education system, student and public services will react. And that is certainly the case. Arizona is also following along with the protests. Doug Ducey, the governor of Arizona, took notice and shared the following tweet. No one wants to see the teachers strike. If schools shut down, our kids are the one who lose out. We have worked side by side with the education community to develop a sustainable plan to give teachers a 20% pay raise by 2020. The teachers' voices were heard and acknowledged, and now they are on the path to a better payment plan. Kentucky is among the latest to see protests of oppressed teachers. Governor Matt Bevan ended up speaking on the subject and his frustration with the teachers' actions. However, he mistakenly spoke too loosely and said that the teacher rally led to at least one child abuse because nobody was home to watch them. This led to massive turmoil throughout Kentucky and only aggravated the protesters more. The Kentucky Attorney General tweeted these remarks regarding the issue and how the governor's words were not be tolerated and ensuring a progressing solution between the state and the teachers of Kentucky. Along with these leaders of justice, other states are soon to follow behind. And this method of action shows the passion of the teachers and the dedication to both the education system and their students. Essentially, teachers should be paid at the level of commensurate with the market value of their skills, which represents the compensation needed to attract and retain a given set of workers. The basis of education relies on quality teachers who can take pride in their work. If this can become a reality, the success of the rallying teachers will blossom everywhere around the United States in the near future. Teaching not only conveys ideas, it also shapes values. As it brings about children's intellectual development, it stimulates their moral development as well. Teachers not only teach our children how to think and solve problems, they also help from their beliefs about what is right, what is good, and what's important in life, shaping their values in the process. Therefore, compensation is the best way to reward the conductor of this profession. Teachers desire higher pay because they love what they do, and they want what is best for their students. Without proper payment, everyone suffers, and it's, if this is a long-term issue, the country could have a bigger problem on its conscience. Through providing different kinds of incentives for different aspects of performance, the compensation models strive to increase motivation for higher quality teaching and to reward the quality of work. With maintained efforts, teachers will prove soon enough that their presence is sincerely desired and marks a great impact on the well-being of our country. Without satisfied quality teachers, everyone will lose out on the opportunity to truly make the most out of education and perhaps a successful career in the future.